So I've been trying to make videos, but it's kind of been hard to come up with an idea as to what to say. I mean, you, when you get left for another woman, it's, it calls into question a lot of your uh, feelings about yourself. Um, I uh, definitely am going through a lot of self-worth issues, and I've definitely been experiencing myself on a whole different level than I ever have before. Um, I've been thinking about a lot of things. Um, things I could do better, things I could do more, things that are within my control. And I think that's powerful when you focus on what you can do about yourself and what you, uh, the power that you have in your life, um, rather than focusing on the things that don't necessarily help you. Um, so right now, I want to, in my life, a guy who will just hang out with me, doesn't try to get down my pants. Um, and I, I have a few friends that are guys right now that are pretty good. Um, I posted a picture of one of them. He's awesome. Um, and then I put it to private because I just don't feel like I'm ready for that much of a even commitment, I guess. It's not really a commitment. But I'm just not ready for so much. I have to take things so slow right now. And a lot of guys haven't been able to handle that haven't been able to handle the fact that I don't want anyone to kiss me. I uh, just, I don't want anyone to touch me right now in that way because I feel so distrustful right now, I guess. I don't know. I've never really been a distrustful person. I've always been very much a cuddled slut. Um, so being in this space is really weird for me. I've never been in a space like this where I wasn't the one who was like, oh, kiss me, touch me, you know, adore me. I'm in this space of, can I just get to know you first? Can we just, you know, whereas I'm in LA where sex is like shaking hands, it seems. Everybody's like, just, hey, I met you today, let's go fuck, you know, and it's, it's really weird. Uh, there's no type of uh, importance or sacredness put on it. So Utah was where I grew up where it's like, you don't even kiss until the third day and here in LA, it's like expected that you'll have sex with somebody as soon as you uh, are alone with them. It's pretty different. Um, pretty different. Um, so I just kind of haven't really been dating much. I've gone on two or three dates. Um, and they've been good dates. Um, all of them were first in some way or another for me. Um, I... I went out with a guy who performed in Cirque du Soleil. That was really cool. Um, went out with a guy who I performed with in a play. So I've only really been out with two guys as far as dates go. Um, and then I had lunch with somebody who I knew from Landmark. I don't know. I don't know what's why I like each time I've been out with somebody I've been with. I've held back. I haven't wanted to really, I haven't really been the person that I used to be. I, uh, I was somebody different before and now it's like I've changed so much. I've, I'm very guarded. I'm not used to feeling guarded around people. I'm used to just being like, hey, open and honest. Let's do this. Let's do here. I want to kiss you. I don't want to kiss you. I don't want to do this. I don't know. Um, I've kissed three people, so I don't know, not much, I haven't been too active, um, actually, I mean, if you count the whole thing, I've kissed four people, but that was before, like, I thought everything was final, and then it wasn't final, and we had to go back and do stuff, so, um, and then it was after that that stuff kind of hit the fan, um, stuff I didn't know about came up, and that really hurt. A lot of stuff. Um, anyway, I'm not supposed to talk about any of that stuff, so we'll put it over there and focus forward. Um, my goals right now, I am creating an iTunes product. I am working towards uh, financial independence that I no longer have. It's weird. It was like overnight I went from millionaire to poverty. It was kind of crazy. Um, or at least poverty for where I'm living, because my apartment is, you know, 5300 a month, and yeah, 
Anyway, I should probably find a new apartment. Um, because, like, I came out here and it's funny, somebody commented about how my apartment is decorated like the Fortress of Solitude, because I was doing that for David. Um, I was decorating it because, like, he loves Superman and everything else. And when I was decorating it, I decorated it with, like, a lot of glass, a lot of chrome, um, and just giving it this really modern vibe because he used to tell me how much he loved modern stuff. And now it's like I'm living in this home that I was making for somebody else, you know, that I was decorating for somebody else. Um, it's not even fully finished, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've... It kind of puts you at a loss. Like, you get kind of sucker punched by all of it. Um, you, you ask, like, what's wrong with me? What's missing in me? What did, you know, all that. And I know what I did wrong. There's a lot of things I did wrong. Um, but then it, when I think about that, then I think, well, does that mean I deserved it? Did I deserve what happened? And, you know, that's a really bad place to even go. I mean, if you're going to heal and be healthy, you can't even go in that place. You have to sit there and just think, you know what? I'm a great person. God damn it. I have so many lovable and amazing qualities about myself and whatever that person didn't have, that's their deal. Um, I was listening to Zig Ziglar talk about Jesus, um, the Sermon on the Mount, and how there were those who were mockers and those who were this and those who were that. And he was like, well, I wondered why they were. And he's like, well, finally I realized it was very simple. It was explained right there in the scriptures. He's like, they mocked because they were mockers. They uh, hated because they were haters. They did this because they were that. And um, it had nothing to do with the Sermon on the Mount because it was the most amazing speech ever given. And yet people couldn't deal with it. There were people who could not handle it. And it wasn't because the speech had anything wrong with it. It's because those people weren't ready for it. Um, and I don't know if that's my marriage, honestly. I feel like David is far and above, like, this amazing person um, in so many ways. He's super intelligent, and he's a great leader. He has a lot of really good qualities, and... Um, He's helped a lot of people really become successful. Um, but those people had to choose to believe. They had to have faith in the vision, the vision of wealth and success. Um, and a lot of people haven't succeeded, um, but that's most businesses. I mean, I think most businesses fell within the first five years, like 90% of them or something. Um, and that's not home-based business even. I'm talking like $50,000 investments into restaurants fell within, first five, within the first five years. Uh, so do I believe in a power network? Absolutely. Do I think that it's a great solution for people who want to work online? Yeah, I do. I think it's, I think it's awesome. Um, I've been taking a break from it due to the fact that in power network is, you really have to be personal with it. You really have to give part of yourself to it. And, um, right now because of things that have, that are best left, um, private, I have uh, chosen to pursue other endeavors. Um, that doesn't mean I'm leaving it by any stretch. It just means I'm not working on it at the moment. Um, and I, I plan to get back to it. I, I really do love the uh, whole thing about it. I mean, it's a very small investment, $25 just for the basic blog to even just start getting traffic and, you know, $20 more if you want to resell that blog. And you can get to the highest level through the steps through of the program. I mean, if you start out with just getting a basic blog to work for your traffic, if you have no traffic, it's it's really exciting that you can do that, that you don't have to immediately be paying the full amount. Um, um, so I really like the way that it's set up. I really think it's awesome. Um, I, I think the training and tools, they could have more content. Um, but what I think what they're trying to teach you is that your story is your content. Because really it is, whatever it is you're going through, and because I can't really tell my story, um, all the nitty-gritty details, um, I can only really speak about myself and my personal experience, um, I think that it's best I take a little bit of a hiatus from 
doing that um, and focus on a product, which I'm super excited about. It's to help people focus forward um, and it's something that I thought I would need and so I can imagine other people need it because usually when I discover something for myself and I, I can, it usually ends up helping other people um, when I give it to them. I, I've, helped, I've had things like that that have gone out and when I've put them into the world have helped tons of people. Whether it's go from being homeless to making 10 grand a month or losing 100 pounds or getting rid of headaches or whatever, I've had these really amazing experiences from people when I've been able to share with them um, and communicate with them in ways that are effective for them. So um, I hope to get this product on the market within this year. Um, I don't know, it's kind of getting close to the end of the year, so probably the first of next year. Because um, there's been a lot to deal with this year. Gosh, I can't even believe it's October already. Holy cow. Strange. I was so excited when I came out in April to L.A. Um, and I thought it was my time, you know, that it was like David was finally really ready to support me in my dreams and stuff. Um, he told me that he didn't want to live in, in L.A., and I was fine with that. I was like, okay. So I was like, we'll commute back and forth. I'll be there two weeks. He'd be here two weeks, you know, and I was good with that. It was all right. Um, but I guess it didn't work out. So anyway, moving on. Now I am looking for men who are quiet and can listen and men who can give me the things that, um, you know, there's this quote that I really like, everyone's entitled to a, first failed, to a first failed marriage. And I think the reason there is that quote is because when you're married, you discover the things that you wanted weren't necessarily the things that you needed. Um, I am a very quiet person uh, when you get to know me. Like at first I'm usually pretty nervous, but um, when I'm around people day to day, I'm pretty quiet. Um, I don't really talk a lot. I do on dates um, and when I'm first getting to know people, but that's more of a nervous habit. Like, I talk when I'm nervous. I don't really talk when I'm comfortable. I don't really feel like I have a lot to say um, in spite of everything. I'm working towards that, though. Working towards it where I feel like I have more to say. And a lot of self-development that I'm doing. Um, anyway, so what I'm looking for now is somebody who's more quiet um, because listening to somebody all the time is, it can get exhausting for me. Um, no matter how, how amazing the stuff they have to say is, it gets kind of exhausting. Um, I'm looking for somebody who doesn't care about what I eat or how good I look that day or whatever. I want somebody who can just love me and accept me just the way I am. Um, I'm tired of guys who want me to change for them. Um, who's okay with the fact that I'm blunt and honest even when I really shouldn't be. Because um, I really don't have a filter on my mouth a lot of the time. I've gotten better at it um, due to the whole public nature of uh, my life over the last few years. Um, but I still am not great. Um, I'm still one of those people who likes to talk about her problems um, to help her like start seeing towards the future. Um, like when we talk about problems, we shouldn't just sit there and talk about the problem. We need to talk about the solution and focus forward. Like you can give yourself, you know, 20 to 40 minutes to complain if it's a severe problem. But like I gave my friend uh, 40 minutes to sit there and talk about how our other friend is in this relationship where the guy hit her. And, um, and then after that, I was like, okay, now let's focus on solutions. And she kept going back to the whole thing. Um, and I get that, you know. Um, I understand it. I do it too sometimes. But And that is a severe problem. We're really worried about her. Um, but you never know. So focusing forward, we focused on how we can impact her in a way to where she feels good enough about herself to be able to let go of this relationship. And that was a cool experience. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, most problems deserve maybe five to twenty, five to ten minutes of complaining. But if they're big problems, you know, twenty to forty minutes analyzing and then focusing on the solution. I'm not saying only twenty to forty minutes, but I'm saying per conversation or per day or whatever. 
Um, anyway, so focus forward. So what I see forward in my life is the best experiences I've ever had. Um, I see myself um, being successful, wildly successful is what I want, uh, independently, without a guy. Um, because, you know, it got really boring to sit there and be called, oh, you're David Wood's wife. No, it's I'm Ashley. Being his wife is something I do, but it's not all of me. Um, I am a lot more than just a wife. Um, I mean, granted, that's a great title. It's beautiful. But I'm a person. Thank you very much. I am a goddamn person. In fact, people are sitting there saying that my name was Wood. It was never Wood. I never changed my name to Wood. Um, I've always been and always will be the Ashley Needles um, of Roosevelt, Utah, who left home at 16, kicked the dust off my feet, swearing I would never look back. And I've looked back twice, maybe, since then. Um, once I went home uh, during my marriage, and I was hanging out with my best friend, Ashley Coford, and her brother was there. His name's Drew. Um, and because of the stuff going on in my marriage, um, things that I didn't really appreciate um, in the way that I was being treated, I ended up getting a little too emotionally close to somebody in Roosevelt. And yeah, that was a bad thing. That was a look back. That was a, what would my life been if I hadn't packed my bat, packed two suitcases and left home at 16. Um, and it was a few other things too. I was dealing with a few other things, but those are on a need to know basis, which I don't think that YouTube necessarily needs to know the nitty gritty of my life. Um, despite how interesting it is. Oh my gosh. I've had such a crazy life. It's like been an episode of Jerry Springer sometimes. It's been crazy. Um, <laughs> but it's all good. It's all good. Um, so yeah, my husband got another one when pregnant and things because partly because of that emotional infidelity. And it was just emotional. It wasn't physical. Um, so yeah. That was one of the things that I did wrong, and it's part of why I really can't be too angry at David for the things that he's done. Um, in fact, did you know 66% of the world is completely okay with affairs and cheating? It's so crazy. I was like, that, there is something so wrong with that. In David's blog post, he put something that I super disagree with. He put that he wasn't in the right relationship. I think that a relationship is something you make right, you work on, you create. I don't think that there is right relationships or wrong relationships. I think that in cases of life-threatening abuse, definitely leave. Um, definitely. But for the most part, I think that relationships are something that are, like, well, not relationships, but marriage. Once you make your bed, you, you know, do everything you can to uh, make that bed work for you. Um, there were times in my marriage I was really tempted to leave, really tempted, um, because there were just things that I didn't appreciate at all. Uh, but they're not really your concern. Um, there's a chance that stuff may come out, I don't know. Um, but I hope it doesn't, because it's not really important. What's important is that you Take the things from Empower Network, from the conferences, from the things that can help you in your life um, and value them. Yeah, we're people. We make mistakes. We're not fucking gods. Nobody's a god. Um, despite sometimes how people put and say that they're the Jesus Christ of MLM, it's not true. It's not true. They're still just, you know, men. In fact, they're not even very old men. They're just, you know young, brilliant men who are full of passion and excitement for life, and that's really cool. So I'm proud of them. I'm proud of both Dave Sharp and David Wood for all their accomplishments. Um, now, 
as for me, I'm not going to be having supermodels hang off of me or whatever. I'm going to give my space self time to be alone and space to heal because um, that's what I need. Um, and I guess my ex does not need that. Um, so thank you for those who informed me of my husband's status updates. Uh, appreciate it, but I don't need it. Um, yeah. So anyway, focusing forward. Uh, I don't have plans for children in my life um, at the moment. I've always thought adoption would be a great thing, um, but I think it's more about having, creating a home where children can be happy before even looking at having children. And David and I never had the marriage that I thought would be good for to bring children into. We never had that relationship. And I think children need to have a relationship where both their parents are happy in it and where both their parents are stable and secure. I don't think you just make a child because you want to make a child. I think that's super incredibly selfish. Um, I think children are the best thing that you can ever have in your life. But if you can't, if you don't have the resources to give them the home that is best for them, then you need to wait or not have them. Um, if you're struggling with depression and stuff and need somebody to love you, having a kid is not the answer. Um, I had a friend in high school who's like, I want to have a kid just so I have somebody who always loves me. I would, no, no, that's no reason to have a child or bring a child into the world. Um, giving a child a great future and being able to give them love and support and a happy relationship to look up to. Now that, those are good reasons you know, to have a kid because having a kid should be, you know, very selfless in a lot of ways. Um, that's part of why I think it, adoption is great because our world is extremely overpopulated. The resources that we have, we're not using wisely. And putting other people on the planet right now, I think is, um, in a lot of ways, very detrimental um, to the rest of the people on the planet and detrimental to them. Um, so I think adoption is amazing. Um, yeah, next thing on the bucket list of talking points that I should probably hit on, uh, am, how am I doing? I have days where I'm okay and I have days where I literally can't even take my dog for a walk. Yesterday was one of those days where I couldn't even take my dog for a walk. I was just super down. Um, I was supposed to just hang out with this guy, um, the picture I posted and put a status update, but then I just ended up not not having the emotional uh, wherewithal to do it. I was just like, mm, I can't. Because, I mean, earlier in the day maybe, but he was busy, and then um, it came to later at night, and I was like, I, I just can't. I just couldn't do it. Um, anyway, so, and I think, you know, you don't have to be dating right after a divorce. I mean, sure, it's like there's the whole vindictive of I have somebody and you don't think going on, um, that people go through, but I, I'm just like, you know, if I'm going to be with somebody, I'm going to be with them for them, not for making my ex jealous, right? I'm going to be with somebody because I like being with them. I like who they are. And right now I, I'm not really getting to know people in that type of easy environment. Um, it's because, you know, I need to get some stuff dealt with before I can, you know, have a regular activity to go to and stuff where I can meet people and just get to know them slowly. Um, the play was fun. I got to know some people through that. Um, and so that's kind of how I got my few dates that I've been on, um, just through getting to know people through there. But I just want to have a conversation, sit down and have a conversation with people, you know, get to know them, um, hang out with them go to a grocery store with them maybe. I don't even need a fancy dinner at this point. I'm just like, eh. Um, yeah, I was talking to a friend of mine and I was like wondering why the hell I was in the space of being so um, reclusive, I guess would be a good word for it. For it. Because I've been very reclusive. Um, 
people see me and it's like at my apartment complex and it's like they see the white stag, the girl who like never socializes. They're like, where have you been? I'm like, in my apartment, walking my dog at 2.30 in the morning so I don't have to see anyone. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been pretty reclusive, but it's all good. Um, I'm okay with that I'm reclusive and that I don't really have furniture. <laughs> um, I mean, I kind of have a day bed that I got last minute because I thought my mom was going to be coming out after some stuff happened, but she didn't. Um, and for a while I had a friend staying with me so they could get on their feet and get to know LA, but not so much right now. And then uh, mostly they were here helping me. They're like, they were taking care of me, making me food because I was just, I was like, I can't eat. I'm too sad. And they're like, Ashley, eat. Um, anyway. It's been insane. I failed my driving test. I drove too slow. I was too cautious, too careful, and failed. Um, and I think that says a lot about my life because in life I am always too cautious and too careful, and I take things slow. Um, especially right now, I'm in this very slow area of my life where it's like conversation for a couple hours then maybe we'll talk about getting together again maybe it's not like I see you, you're hot give me your number which is you know I used to do that I used to be like hey what's up but now it's more like are you going to talk to me or not and th these are my thoughts like is this person going to talk to me oh shit what do I say and I have no idea what to say to people I, I really need to practice conversing with people like people want to talk to me on the phone and I'm like um, uh, I, I, I can't talk to anyone right now. No, don't talk to me. Um, so that's been fun. That's, <laughs> I used to be so good. I felt at, like talking to people, not for long periods of time, but doing the whole butterfly thing, talking to one person for like two minutes, talking to somebody else for like five minutes. I'm just going around. Not where I'm at right now. No. I'm like, shit, they talked to me. What do I do? I mean, I, I wrote about the whole Petco thing where this guy so much just smiled at me and I was running the other direction. And seriously, he was a super gorgeous guy. Like, oh God. Um, if I were in a space to date, it would have been awesome. But I was not, not in that space at that time. Um, obviously, things are more recent for me than perhaps uh, people realize. Um, <laughs> I think I just said too much there. Um, let's see. I love LA. I love how people here are so diversified. Like, I thought Utah was diverse. No, 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 no. Mormonism keeps everybody acting very much the same there. Um, here, it's, you get everything around the block. Um, and it's been kind of cool. It's been really cool. Um, I love that I have my dog right now. She is an incredible support for me and a great friend. Um, I felt so bad when I didn't walk her yesterday and didn't take her out. I mean, she has potty pads around the apartment, but she didn't use them. <laughs> she just went on the floor and I have to clean it up. Um, yeah, there's still one spot I need to clean, but anyway. Bad Ashley. Good pizza. Um, Anyway, I'm really embarrassed. This is just some of the stuff that's been going on. I really don't have like lighting in my apartment. It's really weird. Um, I have one standing lamp that kind of is overblown, but um, yeah, it, it's weird because it's at one of those places they have to light by lamps. It has like a few overhead lights in like the entryway and the closets, but regular rooms like this one, no, there's no lights. It's Pretty sarcastic. I'm like, I really love ceiling lights. I don't like to have lamps, but anyway. One of these days I will work on getting my apartment together. First I've gotta get my finances together. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just day at a time, making a life, a whole new life that I have no idea where it's gonna go. I should probably make a plan and a map for it. But I've always been kind of a seat of the pants kind of girl, just thrown about by destiny. It's been, it's been an adventure, and I don't think it's done yet. And I think the best is yet to come. I think the best is always yet to come. Um, and sometimes it's the best right now, but it gets better later. Um, 
And God, I look forward to falling in love again when it happens. It's going to be amazing because the guy who can get through this crap that I'm going through, he's got to be pretty incredible. He has got to be one amazing son of a gun. And yeah, because right now, everybody is arm's distance. And um, I don't want to stay this way. I'm hoping to overcome this before getting that guy, but I do want a guy who can handle it, can handle that I have some baggage. Um, I have some emotional pain, I guess. I don't want to say trauma or back, whatever, but because um, I've had that used against me way too much. Um, because, yeah, I didn't come from a perfect life, but, you know, don't use it against me. I, I actually came out pretty damn healthy. Um, got myself psychology to a psychologist when I was 16. I was like, I don't want to be this fucked up person that I'm headed for. Help me. And, God, it was amazing. I loved therapy when I was going to it. And I'm going to be doing it again. I love therapy. I think it's so useful um, during hardships and stuff. I haven't started going yet because I kind of need a car. A car would be useful. I was thinking of getting the Tesla. Um, I, I hope to still get that, but um, I have to get. I have to actually pass a driving test. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to f go for my driving test in a few minutes. Um, so I'm going to let you go and cross your fingers that I pass because who knows? I really need a driving license so I can go out and meet people and get back having a life together um, and having my life. Um, we'll say goodbye. Come here, Missy. Can I say goodbye to them? Yeah. This is my amazing and adorable best friend in the world. Huh. Yeah. She is just so sweet and so loving. Okay, I'll set you down. Um, She's, yeah. Um, she makes me feel good about myself. <laughs> She's always eaten. She always has food and water, despite how depressed I am. It reminds me to feed myself. Um, then there's been one day where she hasn't been outside, but that's it. One day where she hasn't had a walk. Every other day she's had walks, three of them per day. She's super spoiled. But yesterday I was just in the apartment with her and um, stuff was going on, stuff came up. And I forgot to take my pills, my 5-HTP, for two days in a row. Um, so I'm back on that, and I love it. Good stuff. <sighs> okay, so, uh, letting go of the drama, getting back into my normal voice rather than my I'm in pain voice. Um, breathing good, feeling good, going out there, and I'm going to go and get my damn license, right? Woo! So... I hope you're doing well, and I hope that someday we can meet, share at some magic moments, play around, goof off, laugh, have some fun, because um, I know out there there are amazing people, and if you're watching this video this long, you've got to be pretty amazing and have an, a heart for others and an attention span, so thank you. And I look forward to uh, what you do in the world, because you're going to do miracles and amazing things. Let's go for it.